Very special. Hello. Hi, Lynn. Hey, look at all your books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've got I've got a couple of years up there too. Oh, you do? That's yes. cool. You're helping. I us always have this fantasy that I'm like in somebody's house and I see one of my books. It's never happened. <laughs> there you are. There you are. Well, welcome, Lynn, to KWA. You are live with us, um, and uh, we're just doing a few announcements, okay. and then Which we're going to we'll have a chit chat. And we'll, yeah. we'll we're going to chit chat with you because you're here now, yeah. and uh, we will move announcements another time. Yeah. Later. No, that's okay, you can do your announcements. <laughs> no, I'm recaffeinating. It's fine. We're good. You're, we're you're good. caffeinated. A recap meeting. You recap. Okay. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Looking forward to this afternoon. We're gonna. We just got a jeep and we're gonna go four wheeling with our in laws for the first time. Oh wow! That's yeah. awesome. That is awesome. And you still have your Harley and you're riding that around. Yeah, Harley riding is tomorrow. Okay. Where do you typically go riding? Well, we, you know, do all of the backcountry around here. It's interesting because people from other places say, oh, you live in San Diego. That must be great, all the weather. But what they don't understand in terms of riding your motorcycle is you have the ocean on the west, Mexico to the south, L.A. to the north, and about five hours of desert to the east. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we just typically stay around here. We might go on a big two-week trip. Uh, up the coast to Canada and back. Oh, wow. wow that... uh, depending on what COVID does. We yeah. were supposed to go across country uh, this for 30 days. We were going to go all the way across the country and then fly back and ship our motorcycles back, but that all got blown up. Yeah. 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 Lots of things got blown up. Another blown time. up. Another time. Um, so, Lynn, we, uh, we met uh, 2018. Um, or it was of 2017, I think, and we were gearing up for uh, our 2018 Kingdom Creativity Conference, right. and you are a keynote speaker for that. And I just want to let you know that since uh, you spoke at that, that you delivered such an anchor point message for so many people. Out of all the conferences that we've had <laughs> with Paul Young and Darren Wilson and and, and others, you have been an anchor point for so many. And it was really due to the formula that you gave um, for everyone at the 2018 Kingdom Creativity Conference. And that was just so brilliant for so many people. And it it's, really, um, put them. yeah. It's um, pretty down to earth, right? Yeah. It was Pretty straight to the point. Straight to the point. Do you, do you have that formula that you could share with everybody? I have it. You know, I should have done like Carl Rove and gotten a whiteboard so I could, <laughs> I could write it. Uh, actually, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> you guys, this is so brilliant. And um, I, everybody that was there at the conference, and I know we've got a lot of new people here hearing Lynn for the first time. Um, you've probably read her book, uh, Heaven is for Real, um, and same kind of different as me. And she's got several other books, many, many yes. other books. She has she's sold over 16 million copies um, in her career. And she's a New York Times bestseller with like 11 uh, different books. And um, we're almost really there. Excited. Okay, we're, we're just introducing you. And she's okay. cool. <laughs> <laughs> she rides Harley. She's super down to earth. She's a godly woman. And uh, she it's is so a fun. kingdom writer. And she is out there um, battling forces of evil with her writing. Yes. Okay. I don't have a whiteboard, but I do have this big white pad. Okay. So I'm going to write the formula. Okay. 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 This is so good, guys. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Now get this, guys. This is an anchor point, and so many people are affected by what this simple formula that, um, that Lynn came up with. And um, it's really down to earth, very simple, but, you but can it's remember so powerful. It and it goes, oh yeah. Yeah. I hope it fits on the screen. I wrote it kind of big. 
Okay, maybe I have to back up. There, it was perfect. Yeah, okay. you can see it. So, write this down because I can't keep talking from behind this paper. There you go, okay. B plus C. B plus C. Minus I, I plus, plus P. Plus N. Times N. Times N, times N. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so usually when I'm speaking, you know, there'll be a crowd and I'll make them guess, but I, I can't hear anybody, so. No, it's <laughs> just us and yeah. other people watching. Okay, <laughs> so the B, the B plus C is very, very practical, okay? And usually I'll say, what do you think the B stands for? And people will have all of these uh, guesses, but really the B stands for butt, like B-U-T-T, -T, your butt. Yeah, put your butt. Your, your bottom, your derriere, your posterior, <laughs> um, plus C, and people usually understand that the C means chair. So B plus C is butt in chair, put your butt in the chair. And uh, one of the things I noticed along the way as I was an aspiring writer and then, you know, started writing articles and I don't know, 20 years later started writing books, is there was a lot of pretty esoteric uh, writing advice out there, but along the way somewhere, I, I read something from a pretty successful writer, and he didn't say but, he said something else, right. uh, <laughs> but in chair, and I was like, wow, that really makes sense, because as writers, I don't know, maybe you guys are like extra godly or something, but <laughs> <laughs> for me, the last thing in the world I want to do as a writer is write. I, I want to do more research or, you know, yeah. interviews or organize my desk or do laundry or whatever it is. I want to do anything but write. So to write, you got to put your butt in the chair. And then the minus. So the next phrase in the equation is minus I plus P. And so usually I'll have people guess, but I'll just tell you. B plus C minus internet and phone. Yep. And, you know, Everybody can probably relate to that. Yeah. We are so, and, and when I came up with this formula, the internet wasn't everywhere, right? I used, I used to actually go to Starbucks to get away from the internet because at the time they did not have Wi-Fi. So right. in order to, you know, have the internet, you had to stay home. Um, but now it's everywhere. So what I've done is I took a page out of Gary Keller's book, The One Thing, which is another uh, thing that I recommend for productivity. Yeah. Uh, Gary Keller is a Christian. He founded Keller Williams Real Estate and he wrote this amazing book called The One Thing. Well, part of the one thing involves creating a bunker space for yourself. Right. So now that's what I actually do in my house. I'm in my bunker right now um, and I close the doors. I put four devices in airplane mode my phone, my computer, my iPad, and my watch. Wow. And when I first started doing that, we still had a son that lived at home. And um, so that the idea behind going into your bunker is that everyone in your life knows that you're in there, but you have to train them. Right. And so what I would do, and I would actually do this, I would write on a post-it note and I would put it on the door. Mom is in her bunker. Next human contact will be at... <laughs> I would write the time. And for a while, for a while, he would come in and, and he would go, you know, knock on the door. He was, you know, 18 or 19 years old, but, yeah. you know, he had those 18 and 19 year old questions like, what food is in the refrigerator that <laughs> leap into my mouth without me having to do any work? So, so he would, uh, he would knock on the door and before the time had arrived and I would say, Next human contact will be at 1.30. But, 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 next human, I will answer that question at 1.30. And pretty soon, maybe three or four weeks, it worked. And so uh, now in order to get away from internet, you know, I plus P, internet and phone, I have to put all my devices in airplane mode, turn off Wi-Fi, and I let everybody in my life know, you know, that I'll be out in about an hour. Yeah. And so butt in the chair, minus internet and phone, and then the N, okay? The N is, that stands for the number of words that you can write without breaking a sweat. Mm. And the idea behind the not breaking a sweat part is that you don't feel intimidated. You don't feel like, oh my gosh, I have to, 
You know, I have right. to sit down there and crank out five pages or whatever, yeah. which is like five pages is 1500 words. Um, so my number is 350. So I can crank out 350 words without breaking a sweat. Yeah. And if you think about that, if you just did that once a day, five days a week, it, what, how many is that? I can't do that math. Uh, yeah. 50, uh, 1750 words. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Yep. So in one week, you have a draft of a feature article. In my case, you have a draft of a chapter of a book because I like really short chapters, but standard yeah. chapters are about 5,000 words. So maybe that would take you three weeks. Right. But um, if you just keep cranking it out in small doses, even the person who's working full time can do that. Yep, exactly. That is so spot on. Um, and it's so good. I, I want everyone listening to this to hear this because you really need to set that time and have other people respect your time because there's so many people trying to infiltrate your time and sabotage, not on purpose, but just because they treat your work as a hobby. And this is where you need to flip it and say, wait, guys, this is not a hobby. This is important to me. And I'm not going to go see that movie with you at this time because this is my writing time or I'm not going to do these things um, right now because this is my time and you get everybody used to that. So listen mm -hmm. to what Lynn is, is releasing right now. It's so important. And this was Lynn, this was such a blessing for everybody at the conference. This is yeah. the number one thing that people talk about um, out of <laughs> everything now. that you said, <laughs> and, and, and along, <laughs> along with you spoke about fear and inspiration. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. The whole thing yeah, was brilliant. Sure. But the number one anchor point that you really established was this formula, and it helped out so many people. Well, a, a couple of things um, that I would like to point out about that method. Uh, one is bad and one is good. I, I should say a downside, not bad. Yeah. Uh, the downside of that is sometimes if you are not careful, you'll find yourself just throwing words up on the screen just to get to your number. Right. <laughs> so rather than writing anything of quality, you will begin to, and I did that myself. I mean, when I wrote Dog Company, I had so many wasted words because I found myself falling into that trap. Yeah. So I'll share something in a minute with you that I used to correct that. Okay. Uh, the upside of this small number N is that you could get up half an hour early and do that. You know, people say, well, gosh, you know, I have small kids at home. Um, I work full time. I have two jobs, whatever it is. But um, I would guess, this is a guess, but I would guess the majority of people aren't getting up at 4.30 in the morning, right. you know? But if you really want it, that's, that's what you'll do. That's what I did, as a matter of fact, when I wrote... Um, uh, the Blood of Lambs, which is about Kamal Saleem, who was a former Muslim terrorist who became a Christian. Wow. Um, I had a full-time job. I was working, writing full-time for World Magazine. I was the features editor. And I was doing books on the side. And I didn't want, I didn't want my editor at World to ever be going, hey, you know, you're kind of lagging. Your, production, your productivity is off. So I would get up at four in the morning and write a thousand words. And then I would go on with the day. So I really, I'm a lot of people aren't morning people. Maybe they should consider becoming a morning person because right. that could be just kind of an excuse. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a night person, man. You know, eight o'clock comes, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, that's the upside of the small number there is that it's doable and you can carve out a little bit. You could do it on your, you know, on your lunch break. Yeah. So um, then I was going to say what I did to correct that tendency to just get to the word count. What I would do sometimes when I was writing Dog Company, for example, dialogue is really easy to write. So I'd, I'd go, oh, I'll find me some dialogue that needs writing and <laughs> yep. blast through it. Um, I mentioned the one thing by Gary Keller. Uh, the secret that unifies the one thing method and the formula that I just mentioned is time. 
time. There, yep. there is no other secret to becoming a successful writer other than time and sitting there undistracted and putting words on the screen. Yeah. So Gary Keller's method involves getting in that bunker that I mentioned and doing your one thing. And I'll, I'll let your, your members read the book to find out what he means by the one thing. Right. But the point is, is that when you close off, close yourself off, and you get in your bunker and you commit to doing your one thing, which in my case is, is writing stories about ordinary people living extraordinary lives. Um, and if you do that for, he, he recommends four hours a day, but most of us, you know, unless, I mean, I can afford four hours a day because this is my job, right. but let's say you did it for one hour a day. Um, that kind of, if you're not shooting for a word count, if you're shooting for a time goal, that kind of mitigates that tendency to just try to get a certain number of words, no matter what those words are. Right. It's good. So good. <laughs> I'm writing notes. So if you see me looking down and not looking at you, it's because I'm writing these notes. <laughs> I really recommend that book. Uh, when I taught at uh, Mount Hermon Christian Writers Conference, I had them order that book into the, into the bookstore. And then he wrote, Gary Keller wrote that book with a, a writer named Jay Papasan. And I got an email from Jay. I didn't know him. I got an email and he, he goes, Hey, you're teaching my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. That good. I love it. So Lynn, this is a crazy time we're in. Everybody's in. The whole world is in uh, this COVID-19, this coronavirus, this this uh, crazy pandemic that's going on. And it's really spun a lot of people out. Um, uh, just a lot of emotions are out there and, and people are just getting caught up into a lot of um, uh, places they probably don't need to be caught up into. And it's really affecting writers. Um, and it affects, it's, it, you know, it's affected me in some aspects. I'm sure it's affected you in some aspects, but how do you um, push through? How do you stay focused um, as a writer uh, during something like this? And what kind of advice would you want to pass on to, to those that are fighting through this? I think that's a great question and something really important to consider. When the pandemic first hit, you know, I, I work from home all the time, yeah. so it wouldn't seem like I would have any big struggles, but I had some, you know, very emotional times, especially as the death toll began to increase in our country. Yeah. I was watching this particular website every day and, and then, you know, when it hit 500 and then at 750 and then a thousand and, um, you know, I was really emotional about it. And, uh, yeah. my husband was like, what's, what's wrong? And I said, well, a thousand people died today and a thousand people are going to die tomorrow and a thousand people are going to die the next day. And that, you know, that really grieves me. Um, I think probably it's unfortunate that we've gotten used to that. Right. That's not good. That's not good. Right. Exactly. Or the idea that it was 2000 a day and now it's, you know, come down some days it's 1000, you know, and, I'm like, oh, it's only 1,000. Right. Before I was really freaked out over 1,000. So it's unfortunate that we get used to things, but we do have to press on, as, as you mentioned. And so by having those anchor points, to put it in your terms, um, and for me, the anchor point is, is the bunker time. Yeah. Um, I think having a habit of productivity is the only way that I am able to press through. I haven't been as good at it all the time, but when I am being good at it, I'll tell you what I do. Um, I get to my desk at 6.30 in the morning. I get up at 4.30 or 5, mainly because my husband does. Because if he didn't, I so wouldn't. <laughs> but uh, 4.30 or 5, and then I'll have some, um, Coffee first thing, devotional time, look at the news a little bit. And then I try to get to my desk at 6.30. And then I write 50 minutes out of each hour. Okay, so that bunker time is not really, it's like a, an hour when you go to the therapist. It's only 50 minutes. <laughs> right, right. So 
I, I saw this study that people are more uh, productive um, when they get a little break. So I write 50 minutes out of each hour for three hours from 6.30 to 9.30. Okay. And then after that is when I do all my research and, and that kind of thing. And so I feel like, wow, by 9.30, I've done my one thing. I've done the thing that is the reason that God put me here right. in terms yeah. of my art. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and if I, you know, if I didn't do anything else for the rest of the day, at least I did the one thing. So to answer your question succinctly, I think you have to develop some kind of habit of productivity that works for you. Yeah. And I'll mention this. Um, have you ever read The War of Art by... Yes. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Love that. So, so in The War of Art by Stephen Pressman, he talks about this struggle that we all have as creatives where, you know, we really want to write or we really want to paint or, you know, wh whatever our art is, but we find this weird resistance. What's yeah. that about? You yeah. know, why, why are we inspired to do this and called to do this? And yes, and yet we can't do it. Right. So he posits this entity called resistance. Right. Yep. And he writes about resistance with a capital R. And he says somewhere in the book that resistance likes to sleep in a little bit. And I find that that's true. Like yeah. if, if I wake up and, and if I get much past like eight o'clock, man, resistance is really present. Yeah. And I have a really hard time getting started. So that's why I get to my desk at 630 yeah. while resistance is still in bed. So good. That is so good. Work while it is sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of us, um, I, a lot of writers have a calling to write. Um, but like you said, there's this resistance to write. Um, we get in the, the, the fantasy world of, oh, it'd be so great to have my book on the shelf. And, um, but they never s put their butt in the chair and turn off the, the internet and phone to get that book because it is work. Um, and a lot of times people think if, you know, we just visualize it in our head and poof, a book's going to be in our hands. Um, but it takes so much commitment and time and we have to fight to, to do that, to do that because we are up against resistance. There is a, there's a spiritual, um, um, a blockage that, that tries to prevent us as writers to create, to write. And that's so spot on. Um, Lynn, what, um, how do you figure out your next project? Like when you're, you know, when you, when you're done with one project, what do you do to discern what your next step is or your next book is or, or next project? I, the problem I have is having too many ideas. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, Me too. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get that. There's more. Uh oh, girlfriend calling. <laughs> <laughs> she can come on the show. <laughs> Let us know when you're. You need to wrap too, please. Oh, okay. What time is it? I need to wrap about ten o'clock. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, So project. too many pro. You have so many project. projects and too how many ideas. Yeah, I have, this, I have this huge idea folder, and so um, that's my problem: is is not really coming up with ideas, but narrowing them down. Yeah. And um, recently, I, one of the things I've been doing, and I'm 14 days from being done, is my husband and I. It was, it was his idea, actually. He's, our, he's done it once before. He read through the Bible in 90 days, wow. the entire Bible chronologically. Yeah. That's and awesome. so he did that, I think, two years ago. And then earlier this year, he said, I'm, I think I'm going to do that again. Do you want to do it with me? And I was like, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like really, really hard. And so I'm actually 76 days in and... Wow. Haven't missed a day, got 14 days to go. So Come on. in the course of that, the Lord spoke to me and said, 
you know, I know you've got all these ideas, but I want you to tell people about me. I want you to write books that tell people about me. And that doesn't mean necessarily writing a book like Heaven is for Real. Right. Um, but that is definitely helping me narrow things down. And so that's, that's from an inspiration standpoint. Uh, but there's also the commercial standpoint, right? So my editor is um, Jothi Ferrari Adler at Simon & Schuster. And so we couldn't be any more opposite in politics and faith, but we just love each other. Right. And he is the best editor that I've ever had. But I've pitched a couple of ideas to him. And he's like, eh, yeah, boring, you know, right. or that's been done a million times or that's too negative. I don't think that can sell. So, you know, it's those two things. You, you have to be inspired, but you also have to consider the commercial side. So the longer you're in the business, the more you understand what's going to sell, what's not going to sell. So that's another filter. Right? Yeah, that is so important. Um, and I love the fact that you're saying that it's not a matter of, of trying to figure out. Some people are in, are in both camps. Some people are trying to figure out what am I supposed to write? And they don't have the ideas. And then others like us have so many ideas. And how do we focus into the one? Um, so it's so important that you are pointing out that that God is the one that's orchestrating and leading things for us. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And when you're reading his word, when we're listening, when we're praying, we're going to hear him speak to us and help us navigate um, what it is we're supposed to write, whether it's you don't have an inkling of where you're supposed to start or narrowing it down to that, to that one thing. Yeah, we um, talked about that in the opening about John 5, abiding in him, remaining in him, and you'll bear much fruit. So that's exactly what you were doing. And uh, to, that, to that end, you will bear much fruit. And then, as you said, you bring in the other part, too, because, you know, you're dealing with your editor. So, yeah. um, and, and it, Well, you know, it, 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 let me tell you where God brings you to a place. I mean, I'm under contract. After I finish the book I'm working on, I'm under contract with Simon & Schuster to write a book called supernatural and it's an exploration of god miracles and the afterlife that's incredible for simon and schuster simon and schuster for a general readership what? that's amazing right so yes. how does that happen and i think i think my agent likes this and he's also you know a blue state guy right yeah. But I think the next book after that is going to be a narrative nonfiction book about the Jesus movement. Wow. And I'm hoping that my editor at Simon & Schuster will like that one too. Because I really feel like that's the next book I'm supposed to do. Right. Yeah. But I think that that's a, an interesting point for Christian writers. Um, I, I have uh, my first, actually my second agent, Lee Huff, um, he passed away in 2013 of a, of a brain tumor. But he used to say this, you know, he'd go to writers conferences and he would maybe read some writing that a, an aspiring Christian writer did and he'd start to maybe make some suggestions and that writer would say, oh, well, I don't really think I need to change that because God told me to write it this way. Right. And Lee, who's also a Christian, would say, well, God told me not to represent it. <laughs> <laughs> So, so true. So this idea, you know, I think Christians can over-spiritualize. Um, yep. You know, they, they, there's a reason that people are successful in the business. And a lot of times we over-spiritualize and we say, well, that reason is because they're compromising spiritually. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit. You know, that's probably not true in right. most cases because you have a lot of people who are equal equally as spirit led equally as much a child of god as you are and they have a professional gift just like you have a gift right right you know and so the gift of editing or the gift of being a publisher though that's an entirely different skill set yeah. and it's one that i don't have by the way and so um as christians we need to not be puffed up about our own you know spirituality we need to be humble we need to 
be willing to listen and take the advice of people who have different gifts and skill sets than we do. Love that. That is so important. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is so important. One question I want to fit in um, before before you have to leave is, um, what does success look like to you? And what advice would you give everyone pursuing a writing career as a Christian um, in this world? Like, what does success look like for you um, as a Christian writer? Um, I think... If you'd asked me that 10 years ago, I would have answered the question differently. Yeah. I would have said, oh, success looks like having a bestseller or success looks like selling a whole bunch of books. Right. In numbers. Success lo looks like having my name in Publishers Weekly or having a great big advance or something like that. Right. But now success for me looks like picking up my cross daily and okay. following Jesus. And we talked about resistance, okay? I resist that. I don't want to, you know, get in here and slug it out with my computer and the brain and the, and the research. I don't want to. My friend Barbara Nicolosi, who's a screenwriter, she said, I don't like writing. I like having written. <laughs> <laughs> And that's me. I don't, I don't like writing. Good. As a matter of fact, I interviewed them. Um, have you heard of that book, uh, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens? It's a you have it. Yeah, okay. have. huge best-selling novel right now. I mean, it's been on the bestseller list forever. And so I interviewed her because I wanted to hear about her struggles because I was shocked. She's almost 70 years old and it's her first novel. Wow. Which is really cool, right? Come on, yes. Come on. And I've never, unlike Gray, I've never written a novel. So I'm like hugely envious in the most Christian way, of course. <laughs> uh, and, and so when I read her bio, I was like, man, I want to write novels and yeah. I'm only 58. Maybe I've got time, you know? Yeah. And so I interviewed her for a book I'm working on to ask her, you know, tell me about your struggle. Tell me about how you really fought to get this thing done. And it took her 10 years to write it. And so her answer was, oh, it wasn't a struggle at all. I got up at 4.30 every morning and I just couldn't wait. I just loved it. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was, she's just delightful. Wow. So nice. I'm so happy for her success. I think that the film rights have already been sold. But it wasn't a struggle for her at all. It is a struggle for me. And so for me, success looks like getting up and putting those words on the paper every day. Yeah. It looks like my three hours in the morning. And, you know, the God is in charge of the, of the results, right? Right. I can't, I can't make a bestseller. God, only God's favor can do that. So that's what um. success looks like for me. And again, I keep going back to it. The habit, the habit of, the habit of product, productivity. Yeah. That is so Beautiful. good. We have two minutes to wrap up and I want to hear what you're, what you're more of what you've got to come. So it, are you working now on Supernatural? What's, what's No, I'm working on a book called Your Weakness is Your Strength. And it's a book about how we not only uh, can benefit from adversity, but humans are actually constructed so that we need adversity. We need adversity in order to thrive. Yeah. We need failure in order to thrive. We need to explore our weaknesses and mine them for our strengths. Wow. So it's going to be kind of a, um, hopefully, one part inspiration, right? Yeah. Uh, one part where you meet people who have overcome incredible odds or turn their weaknesses into strength. Uh, one part data, so kind of a Malcolm Gladwell-ish exploration of the science uh, under this, uh, science of resilience and post-traumatic growth. And then one part cultural corrective, because I think really there's this idea out there now, um, I call it weak chic. So, you know, everybody's out there, everybody has to have a victimhood story. I mean, you don't have street cred unless, unless you have a, a victim story. Right. Um, so I think that rather than people looking at their weaknesses and advers adversity from a, through a lens of victimhood, to look at it as um, 
what's necessary. Like I learned the most fascinating thing. This is probably old news to you, but did you know that giant sequoia trees actually need fire? I don't think I knew that. Yeah, they need fire because and then it helps them grow, right? Or the more more um, more seeds are planted. Is that yeah, right? yeah. I did yeah. not know that. So yeah, I heard that. This is this is fascinating, and I think that this period uh, that I'm going to speak of is analogous to our culture right now. So. Prior to the 1960s, in our national forests, and particularly in Sequoia National Forest, Yosemite Kings Canyon, um, anytime a wildfire started, the firefighters would put it out as fast as possible. So for a hundred years, we had this fire suppression. And for a hundred years, the sequoias did not grow and reproduce. Wow. And so then in the 1960s, this one particular uh, biologists started experimenting with the effects of fire on sequoias and he discovered exactly what Gray was saying that when the wildfires come these green cones on the trees which uh, the oldest of these trees is like 3,000 years old yeah so imagine what they've seen yeah <laughs> um, so these green cones dry up and the seeds are released and then they go into the ground and then a, later, a hard freeze covers them, which you don't think of that as particularly nourishing, right? right? And then when the spring comes, the seedlings sprout up. And because of the fire, now there's also a hole in the canopy of the forest. And so the seedlings get sunlight. sunlight. And um, wow. so I think that we are in a period in our culture of fire suppression because we drug people so they won't be sad, wow. right? We have helicopter moms, we have baby monitors. We don't let our kids go outside and fall down. Um, right. We uh, don't have failing grades, right? We have participation trophies, we grade on the curve. So all of these things are meant to make people feel better, but we don't need to feel better. We need to feel bad, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Need, we need to, we, we need to experience growth through suffering. So that's what my book is about. Wow. I love it. When can we look forward to seeing that? That's a good question. You know, I actually have to sit down and write it. So <laughs> <laughs> well, put your butt in the chair. <laughs> I know, right? Get in your bunker, put the sign on the door. Actually, I just had a great conversation with my editor yesterday because the original concept for the book didn't prove out. And I just yesterday solidified everything I just told you. Okay. And so I have about 40, 45,000 words written, but they were sort of going in another direction. Right. And now I have to salvage what fits, you know, my actual thesis right. and then fill in around it. So I, I like I'm thinking, that is. For I'm this sorry. Time, for this time, what you're writing is so important for this time, yeah. for this season. I feel like, it, I wish it was already done, right? Because yeah. it, but you know, hopefully everything will still be just as messed up a year from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll get your book and they'll go, oi, I should have, I, you know, I should have known this, but. I hope so. Good, I'm glad you like the concept. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, love it, Lynn. Very, very valuable. Love everything that you're doing. And we're just so thankful for you giving us your time uh, today, Lynn, and, um, uh, we just pray blessings over yeah. your project, Lynn. We pray blessings over you and your family and your husband and and everything that you put your hand to, that it would be, uh, that would have the favor of the Lord upon it, that it would reach more people for Christ and that you are a brilliant ambassador for the King and his kingdom, Lynn. And we're just so thankful for who you are and yeah. we speak blessings over you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank so, you much so much for being with us. Yeah. We Every, really thanks for having me. Great idea. Love yeah. You. Everybody go to lynnvincent.com and you can uh, see all of her books and read all about her. You'll see an awesome picture of her on her Harley and the, the whole page. <laughs> And, um, and, uh, we just, we're just so thankful for you, Lynn. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. We love you. We love right. you. Thank love you too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Wow. 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 Uh, you know, I just don't think it gets better than that. Yeah. I mean, you're hearing from this woman who has produced so many, uh, I mean, best-selling books, her last book, Indianapolis, which was in 
incredible. Yeah. I mean, hit the New York Times bestseller list within weeks, which it's so hard to do that, yeah. folks. Um, you need to sell 10,000, 15,000 in a week to, in order to hit those that bestseller list on the New York Times, just so you, if, for those that are curious on how many books you need to sell. And it goes by week. Every week they have the New York Times bestseller. So you got to really um, sell a lot of books to yeah. get on that list. And, and she's dropping seeds of, 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 of hope and redemption and you know obviously she's she's doing a she there's many different books that she's written but i look back at like and i know a lot of you know heaven is for real i think that was one of the ones that we, you know we all kind of know and then they made yeah. the movie about it and i i was working at the time and a, a young gal came to me and and i had i hadn't even heard about the book and she said have you heard about this book and she was not uh, a christian and she read the book and she had, and she knew I was, and she had all kinds of questions from the book um, that, you know, sparked conversation after conversation after conversation, these really deep, meaningful conversations yeah. um, from the book that she had read that Lynn wrote. And, um, and to this day, and it's been many years, she will still uh, call me and talk to me about, um, about the things of God. And it's just, that to me is success, right? Yeah. That to me, and we know there's millions of stories out there like that. Um, so good. But I just, I, I mean, and you know, same kind of different as me, right? Yeah. I mean, that was um, I mean, but all, but everything. I, I had to. I listened to Indianapolis online. I mean, on, on Audible, and um, I was doing a lot of driving then, and uh, it's, it's not something I would have normally picked up, but because I love Lynn and she's such a brilliant writer. And her and Sarah uh, Vladek um, yeah. worked on that. And uh, Sarah, also uh, a local to San Diego, brilliant young lady. Maybe yeah. we'll, well, maybe we'll, we'll get her, her on. The show. on. Um, uh, she did the documentary uh, for that for Indianapolis. She's brilliant and lovely. And um, that book, so well written. And yeah. there were parts I honestly couldn't listen to because it was so. Um, devastating yeah it's pretty the loss was so gnarly. devastating but they told the story and they did it well and yeah. they remembered Such the people that need to be remembered yeah and honored honored them and um another fantastic fantastic book that just uh lynn can't say enough can't say enough she's wonderful <laughs> i love there's so many great points that lynn pulled out and deposited for us so i hope and i pray that and i know you guys are receiving a lot of this and that god is speaking to each one of you um i released a word uh last night i went live and i was walking through psalm 40 um and it was a word that i was feeling the lord saying that july and august especially are is a, is a strong point of him pushing us to write and um what i want to mention is what i was feeling as i'm writing i'm feeling very sluggish i feel like i'm in the mud i feel like i'm in this the, uh, confined and i and i've realized that um when lynn was talking about resistance capital r um resistance is really um strong right now yeah but there's so much fruit that we're going to have as you guys plow through resistance uh in the name of jesus and the empowerment of god upon you as writers that you need to push through once you start writing every day um and um try to have that quality time of writing set it aside each day i we put a list on um kwa page um, at the top says don't give up and we're putting in our word counts each day and um it's there to not um, bolster us or, or make you feel less it's to help encourage and people are getting right. encouraged to see these numbers and some of the times you're going to see me only write 400 words and other times I wrote 1,500 words. So it's all over the place. But I'm just writing every day. And it is. It does not lessen up. I thought, oh, man, I just need to push through because I felt resistance before. But then you get into a flow. And then you're like, but every day it's like starting over. It's like, oh. But that formula that uh, Lynn gave us, put your butt in the chair. And I wrote that in the comments, by the way. So if you go back into the comments, yeah, um, you'll see the whole formula is in there. So, 
so good. And, and um, um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about was something I was feeling is I feel like we're in a place that we need to be um, uh, on the offense in our writing, not a defensive writing posture. What I mean by that is just take driving as an example. There's two ways to drive. You can be a defensive driver or you can be an offensive driver. You're, you're, you, you're very, um, you're, you, you know where you're going. You're not gonna, you're not gonna dilly dally. You're going, you know, full throttle and um, there's no real defense. And I think that is part of us pushing through resistance. We need to be very offensive with our riding, which means we need to have a posture of, of not shield up, but sword out um, to attack. Um, we need to uh, be confident in who God is and who he says we are. Um, we need to stand on the rock of truth, the ultimate truth and what he says we are, not what the enemy says we are. Uh, we need to stay away from comparison. Um, that's a huge one. And um, we all battle that with comparison. There's no one outside of that. And so even... And that's a resistance. Yeah. That's, that's that, that uh, thing called resistance. And we can call that thing a lot of names. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one of his strategies. Yeah. For having you resist, you know, uh, going after what God has, has given you. And exactly. And throwing away your shot. Throwing <laughs> away your shot. Yeah, so that, that's resistance. <laughs> hey, listen to this scripture, guys. Acts 4.13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Oh, beautiful. I want you to understand that as you spend time with Jesus, as you are in the word, like Lynn is reading, you know, 90 days straight to finish the God's word, that um, that's also a challenge for all of us, I think. And it wasn't something that she said, but I just feel like the Lord's saying, hey, I'm prompting the people, my people to read more about me, to get closer to me, not just to read, but to get closer to him. And um, so this, this, uh, this scripture, <clears throat> Listen to that. And they perceived that these men were uneducated and they were common men. I want you to understand that you don't have to have like this amazing college degree or this resume that you just need to stay close to Jesus and that and then others will be judging you on the outside of the world saying, well, who are these people? Um, you know, I, I failed English, guys. I failed English. And I'm not proud that I failed English, but I'm showing you the power and glory of my God, of the right. God of the universe, the God that created me and said, Bray, I, through your weakness, I'm going to be strong. I'm gonna, my strength is going to show up. And, and, and so when we're talking about, you know, when Lynn's talking about the weakness and strength, that's prime example. And Paul talks about that. Hey, when God says, um, through your weakness, I will be strong. What's the next line that Paul says? Therefore, I am going to celebrate my weakness. Yeah. So I don't boast that I failed English. I celebrate that I failed English because God showed up and now has produced seven books out of me and more books are coming. Um, the other, the other yeah. thing I want to say is, Writing never gets easier. It gets better. Um, so don't think that once you get one book out, it's going to become easier. Some aspects of it will because you know more of the game. But writing is all about putting our butt in the chair and putting our time in. Yeah. I want to go back to what you were talking about, too, with, um, you know, not having maybe all the education or the resources mm -hmm. or whatever it is um, that, you know, I didn't go to Wesleyan University like, like um, you know, uh, Lynn manuel Miranda. I didn't get the education yeah. that he got. I didn't have the opportunities, maybe, or take the opportunities. I don't know. Um, and yet, uh, God still says, I can do stuff. Yeah. 
and uh and 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 because of my weakness he is strong true but i the, you know when i talked about remaining in him and abiding in him there's another aspect of that and that is the agreement that he is you know like he said like you said he that what he says is true so it's got to be my agreement and my my action has to line up with my words so if i say yes god i believe that you put something in me yes god i believe that you are uh that the holy spirit will is the best teacher yes and that uh, and so i'm not brilliant. saying that education is bad please no, don't misunderstand me good. um i'm just saying for my own per I, I was not educated in any of these things um and so i'm saying yes god i believe that holy spirit is a great teacher that you put this in me that is part of my design that you've called me to do this yeah and so i'm going to i'm going to put my butt in the chair i'm going to do it um but that agreement and action has to go hand in hand with your faith or it results in nothing right and so i was thinking about bray and i today because i was listening to a podcast um you're thinking about me i was thinking about you and me oh both of us <laughs> Okay, don't make me cough and laugh at the same time. Um, I was listening to a brilliant podcast. I love, uh, I think his name is Stephen Roach, um, Makers and Mystics. And I, he brings on these incredibly gifted, creative souls that, ha that, that when I listen to them, like their language and all that they, yeah. the, their vernacular, and I'm like, oh man, I'm so inspired by them. And I was thinking, what do Bray and I, I mean, we are leaders. We are leaders and pastors of creatives. That's what our, 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 non, our nonprofit is. We, we're, we're now full-time, Bray stepped away from his job, full-time invested in this. Yep. And it kind of makes me laugh a little bit that God put us in this place <laughs> with the limitations that we've had on our lives. And I know a lot of you may know some of our background, some of you may not. But you know what I think the most? I think it's because we said yes. Yes. I think it's because we said yes. We and so we're yes. not the, the only game in town. I mean, you know, and we, we're always pointing to other people and pointing to you guys. Um, but we said yes. And that's why we're sitting in the seat here today talking with you. Because we said yes. We'll give you whatever we have. Yeah. And we'll bring in others to yeah. give you what they have. Right. And if any of this helps... We say yes, yeah. and we say amen, and we say we're all into this, whatever it looks like. Um, we are learning as you are learning, yeah. and we are growing as you are growing, amen. and um, and I love it. I just so, I, I love what God is doing in all of us. God is fun if we say yes and abide in Him, and then put action to our faith. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just um, the disciples said yes, <clears throat> and if they had known what they knew they were going to go through, what, what they went through, they would have said no. Um, so a lot of times God's not going to tell us everything ahead of time. He's not because he knows if we knew we would say no. Um, so our faith is so tangible. When you see what God has done and has brought you through and you, you, you have those anchor points, those testimony, um, there's power in the testimony. Yeah, that's what carries you through to continue to say, "Yes, God, here I am, here I am." And right. And right. Right. And right. And right. And um, just let it pour out of you. Yeah. And 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 you know, I I was uh, you know, watching obviously uh, Hamilton documentary, and he wrote obviously, everywhere. Obviously, he wrote obviously. everywhere. He wrote on the subway. He wrote. Um, one of the songs, and I'm not sure which one it is now, but he wrote it. He was taking the subway to go to a birthday party, and he was writing on the subway and then went to the birthday party and then finished on the subway oh, writing that song um, on the subway. Yeah. Um, he wrote everywhere where, you know, I mean, yes, we're going to create bunkers for ourselves, yeah. right? And do that because that's what is, that's our commitment yeah. to our craft. You have to be committed to your craft. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I will, I'll be driving in the car and I'll get a line of something. Yeah. I, I write a lot of poetry, so I'll get a line of something and I'll just lift up my phone and press record and just speak it into there so that it's, it's there. Don't yeah. lose it. I love that, um, that uh, Lynn said she has a creative idea folder. Yeah 
creative idea folder you can create you know you you create just create sentences put them on a google doc and then pull from them if you get a brilliant sentence you don't even yeah. know where it belongs in your story right. or your book put it in a google doc that says brilliant sentences i don't know title it something and go back and pull from that like oh that would that would fit perfectly yeah. you know but write write and write and write that's that's yeah. how you're going to be yeah a writer and our uh, it's, it's going back to paul young author of the shack um he was working three jobs guys and he wrote like 45 minutes on the train i think he took to, to one of his jobs and that's how the shack was written mm. working three jobs everyone's got a story and um so anytime someone comes to me saying i just don't have the time i'm like well then you're never going to get it done um and that's the that's the point of this like yeah. if you believe that god has placed something in your heart then you need to fight to get it out and um and you need to fight and find the time and on average uh people watch four to five hours of tv a day on average so most of the time you can cut out a lot of different you can find time guys and um here's another piece of scripture hebrews 13 6 says so we can confidently say so believers so we can confidently say the lord is my helper i will not fear what can man do to me Ooh. you can confidently yeah. say Come the on. lord is my helper i will not fear what can man do to me and that's when you have eternity on the heart of who you are you understand that you are here for a short time and then eternity so what can man truly do to us um in this world what can this world really do to us and, that, and we will have no fear because our confidence is in god he is our helper yeah, yeah sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no. i i was thinking about that as artists as creatives as writers a lot of time we write and we think oh will they like this mm -hmm. you know oh will so and so like this will my family like this will anybody like this and we're you know we we, we go to that um that place of pleasing men pleasing man rather than pleasing god and and we write for him and then he does he does the rest right he yeah. does the rest um but we're our art our writing everything we create will always be rejected by someone someone lots of someone's yeah it, they will they'll be rejected um we're we you know i i always use the example of beetle the beatles because i'm a huge beetle fan right i love their music who? there are people who <laughs> the who there <laughs> there are people who don't like the beatles i, I like the beatles it. i, I like don't get beatles. it but there are people who don't like the beatles there's going to be people who don't like hamilton i like it other people are not you know so you are you will be no matter how creative you are no matter what kind of a, a, a brilliant author you are whether you're writing a book or a screenplay or a, a, a stage play or whatever you're writing someone might reject it yeah chances are a lot of people are going to reject it so who are you grounded in what is your where where is where are you writing from from that place of being pleased uh being pleasing pleasing men or pleasing god yeah yeah here's another scripture guys i want to leave this is the third final scripture i want to leave you with today joshua 1 9 says i have i not commanded you god says have i not commanded us he's commanded each one of us something guys have i not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Uh, let that be a huge encouragement to each one of us, guys. Has he not commanded us? Be courageous. Be strong. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yep. So good, guys. So good. Nice. Um. I'm going to finish off with some announcements and then Jill's got uh, a finishing 
little, uh, exercise. little exercise for us. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you were talking about Idlewild. Yeah. Um, you want to you want to go back to that? Yeah. So we got Idlewild guys coming up November fifth to the seventh of this year, twenty twenty. We've already got our our cabin reserved. We've been up there a few times. It's always sold out. Um, everyone has a mountaintop experience. We come down glowing from the mountaintop. We feel like Moses. Um, we're like, oh, I've been with God and uh, been writing and being encouraged. There's prophetic words. There's encouraging words. Mm -hmm. There's community because it's a small group. Um, Jill and I are going to be doing some teaching and training. We're going to be doing some critique work with, with your stories for those that are willing to step out with their stories. Um, and um, we're going to have special guest Michelle Barsana there to, to lead us in worship. Uh, one of the nights, and she's actually going to be talking uh, with us as well. She's she's an author and songwriter of you know hundreds of songs. Um, she had all the original music done for Jill's Once Upon a Backpack um, audiobook, which is coming out soon. On Audible soon. And um, so I encourage you guys to um, uh, register for Idlewild. We've got several registered already, and there's limited space. Uh, so it's two ninety nine for KWA members and three forty nine for non members. Um, if you become a member, it's only sixty dollars for an entire year. You get an act uh, as a member, you get a discount to Idlewild, which is you know fifty dollars off. So you're already um, recouping a lot of your investment as a KWA member. You will gain access to our KWA member only private Facebook group page where I have several mini teachings on there and more coming. Um, and these regular gatherings, once quarantine lifts, yeah. will only be uh, live streamed for members. Yeah. So it won't be on the public group page. Yeah, so um, so you become a member. And, and becoming a member isn't just about becoming a member. It's, it's about sewing, sewing yeah. in to your calling. This is where you put your money where your mouth is. This is where you, 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 you some, it's just a little amount but we feel like it's so important. We know it's so important when somebody lays down their $60. It's not just to put, you know, join another group. It's about you making a statement saying, I believe in who God has called me to be as a writer. Mm -hmm. And writing is no longer a hobby for me. I'm making this investment for me. Um, and that's the stance we like our members to take. Um, they step in to a family um uh, of people running together we have over 160 members now we've got people around the world that are joining um, um throughout the states uh so it's fantastic to be running together because kwa would not be in existence if god did not say bray gather my scribes and give me room to speak to them and so there is let's put our skin in the game you know let's get you know our elbows bloodied let's go i'm ready to rock and roll um, here's my $60. Let's do this. Um, so that's what the $60 is all about. Um, those that are published authors, um, uh, as a KWA member, we're also putting their book and their link on our website, kingdomwritersassociation.com. Uh, and then we've got other added benefits. We've got discounts for workshops. Um, we've got three workshops going right now. Uh, the ins and outs of self-publishing. Um, building your author platform and marketing tips is another one. And then the third one is writing children's books. So those are going to be the nuts and bolts. You're going to go deeper. Um, I'm walking you through some PowerPoint presentations, lots of notes, a lot of great fruit and breakthrough for you um, that you need to have when you're stepping into this industry. So as a member, it's only $20. You get 50% off the workshops. And uh, that's where we go. Great deep. investment. So, uh, you know, for those of you who are, if this is your first time joining us and you're wondering why we're not sitting here writing, um, first of all, you know, quarantining is kind of hard because we, we like to do writing prompts. Um, but, you, you know, if you want the real nuts and bolts, we do provide that, but we provide that um, through those workshops. Yeah. So, yeah, the monthly gatherings, mm -hmm. you're going to get encouragement. God's going to be speaking to you. We just give him space to speak to us. Um, and then you'll get some the how-tos um, through the workshops. Right. So, so they're separate. 
Um, the other thing is, is we have a short story contest. So I want everyone to, to, to be working on the short story. This is our first KWA short story contest. It's on our website, uh, kingdomwritersassociation.com. Look up all the details, what oh, that entails. Uh, Jill's going to put the link on there. Um, I think it's $10 for KWA members to enter or submit um, their short story. You can submit multiple short stories. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. It's a, we call it the Quill Awards. And there's $100 for first place and then uh, several awards uh, for second, third, and fourth place. Um, and this is a great opportunity to become an award-winning author. And this is part of building your author platform that we talk about. So we're here to build you up and build your, your platform because that carries weight in the world when you can say you're an award-winning author. And, um, and so we're going to have judging and we have judges ready judges. to uh, read your work. And we've got a whole outline. So go to the website. It's got all the details. It's fantastic. It's going to be a blast. And um, the deadline, I think, is October 1st <clears throat> or November 1st, something like that. October 31st. Th October 31st. Halloween, why not? Something like that. Um, a couple shout outs. We got some published books that just oh, came God. out, guys. Um, we're excited. Some KWA members released more of their work for the world. Yay. Um, it's going to go on the shelves. Um, there's going to be read by people and be, uh, their lives changed. Um, so we're so proud of, of a couple people here, Rika Thomas, um, loving and hating this thing called church. Um, and so this is something she's been working on for eight years. I believe this is her fourth book that she's released since joining KWA a few years ago, guys. So she got it. She sewed into herself. She said, I'm all in. Uh, she became a member and she produced three books and now her fourth book just came out as a KWA member. Incredible job, Rika. Check it out on Amazon. So loving and hating this thing called church. Um, you can find it on Amazon along with her other books, Rika Thomas. Um, we have a new KWA member. Um, her name is Elizabeth Ann Phillips. Welcome to KWA, Come Elizabeth. On. And um, right out of the gate, uh, she just released her first book, and it's called, I have the copy here, um, Escaping Satan's Grasp. Um, what a title that is, guys. Escaping Satan's Grasp by Elizabeth Ann Phillips. You'll want to get a copy of this incredible read. It's got a, a screw tape letter feel to it. It's a true story but she's bringing in the fictional, um, but also truthful in a lot of aspects, the demons um, that were plaguing her and her family. Satanical ritual abuse. And yeah, so it is a crazy mm -hmm. uh, true story uh, with, with redemption um, because God is that good. He yep. is the redeemer. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, so get Elizabeth Ann Phillips' book, Escaping Satan's Grasp. Um, all this is all they're all available on Amazon. I put the um the names of the books in the comments for you. Okay, and you can also go to our website, uh kingdomwritersassociation.com, go to resources and you can see a list of authors and their books and their yes. links there. Yeah. We've got another shout out to Michelle Mosley. Uh she has she is almost at the point of releasing uh through, with her publisher her epic fantasy novel called Darkara. And um, I've had the privilege and honor of reading it, and it's amazing and brilliant. And uh, you can check it out on Goodreads right now. Um, but um, and Michelle Mosley has also done some blog interviews that we've been posting on KWA Facebook group page. And but her her book's coming out, Darkara. That's D A R C A R A, Darkara. And uh, really excited about that. Uh, more books are being released, guys. Are you next? Are you the next one to release your book? And we need to put that formula in play that Lynn Vincent gave us and deposited for us. Um, and so we're very excited about this, guys. 
Our next, did you have something to add? Well, I just wanted to add, we talked with uh, someone this, uh, this week who is very interested and has been uh, writing uh, screenplays. So I know we talked yes. a lot about books, um, but we also know that there are those of you who are writing other things, um, songs, poetry, screenplays, blogs, uh, screenplays, magazine articles, blogs, uh, your journalists, um, um, you know, uh, being a playwright, maybe you're a playwright. Um, we want to be able to um, encourage you in your craft as well. Uh, so screen screenwriting is coming up now and it's coming up uh, quite a bit. Yeah. We're hearing about it. So if you are a screenwriter, if you are writing for screen, um, give us a shout out, like email us, uh, yeah. contact us, because um, we want to make sure that we are, are serving you as well. And of course, all of this is right. Can, for any kind of writing, right? What we're talking about can be applied to any kind of writing, but um, yeah. there might be some specific things down the line that we might have for a uh, screen screenwriter. So if that's your, if that's your thing, let us know. Yeah. And we've had screenwriters, you know, speakers coming into our conferences. Darren Wilson's a screenwriter. Yes. And um, we have one of our vision leads is actually um, uh, Dr. Larry Wood. He is um uh, and contract in Hollywood right now. Of course, things have slowed quite a bit in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but he has uh, one of his books is being um, uh, re released in uh, a series. Yeah. Um, uh, a TV series. So, uh, yeah, just let us know. Yeah. So exciting times, guys. So just keep us informed on what you're doing, what your assignment is that, that helps us navigate and to pray over you and your, your assignment. Our next KWA gathering will most likely be online again. Um, August 8th is our next KWA gathering. Mark your calendars, August 8th. And we are going to have another spectacular guest on our show. Um, and she wrote this beautiful book called Bandersnatch. It's all about C.S. Lewis, J.R. Tolkien, and the creative collaboration of the Inklings. Her name is Diana Pavlax Glyer. And um, so we've gotten to know her. And uh, we were all supposed to go to Oxford in August. Uh, Diana had a, a conference that she was going to be speaking at in Oxford. She was also going to speak to our group that was going to Oxford, but unfortunately because of COVID um, and the shutdowns, we had to postpone. Everything is on hold. Um, so we're not going to Oxford, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring Oxford to you guys. And yeah. um, she wrote The Company They Keep, which is a brilliant book about the Inklings. And then this one is uh, my favorite uh, Inklings book. Um, because it's all about collaboration and community, and that's Love what it. Diana Glyer is all about. So she's going to be on our show uh, August 8th, and we're going to be talking about the Inklings. We're going to be talking about Oxford. We're going to be talking about the impact these writers have, and um, so that's going to be a great, great time together and full of encouragement. So that's our announcements. Those are the announcements. So we'll wrap up today. Um, we do like to do uh, writing prompts, mm -hmm. as we spoke about before. Um, it gets a little difficult here online. Um, so I just want to take the opportunity to do kind of an activation with you. If you're willing to do this, I think it would be beneficial. So many times we imagine the worst. We imagine ourselves not succeeding, not get, not doing what we need to do. We imagine whatever, right? Um, our imagination imagines the worst. How often do we take the time to imagine the best? And yeah. I believe that God gave us imaginations to imagine great things, not bad things, but great things to imagine him. Because he's so big, we need an imagination to be able to even go near to imagining the largeness of our God. So I want you to take a moment, if you would, just to close your eyes. Close your eyes and using his sanctified imagination, because he gives us this imagination, see yourself through his eyes. Yeah, so everyone close your eyes and just listen to what uh, Jill's, uh, listen to Jill's voice. Yeah, I just want you to um, close your eyes and picture yourselves, but in chair. But in chair, just just that right there, 
you're sitting there in your bunker, in your space, in your, in your place, and you're writing, and the words are just flowing out from you. God's, it's like there's a, a supernatural download that's flowing out from you, and you're just writing on the paper, and you're collaborating with the Holy Spirit, and it's uh, the, the, mud, the mud and murkiness that Bray talked about, it, there, it's just not there. It's just like so you're light and it's free and it's freely going out. And I want you to imagine yourself fulfilling the call of God on your life. What would that look like to you? What has God called you specifically to do? Is it to start a book? Is it to finish a book? Is it to see your words up on screen? Is it to see a stage play? Are you doing a spoken word or speaking at a conference? And then see even further. See one person impacted, just one. We know there will be many, but just see one person impacted by the seeds you're sowing. By you fulfilling what God is calling you to do. Imagine it. See it. Embrace it. Activate your faith. This is what we're doing. We're activating faith. We're, we're exercising our brains to embrace the victory that God has already given us. And the next time you write, start from this place of seeing yourself fulfilling the vision that God has put on your heart. And that's it. We we'll leave good. you with that. That's good. We we'll leave you with that. Yeah. Imagine the best. Yeah. Take the time and imagine the best. Yeah. That's a good exercise to do before you start writing, and actually after you're done writing. It's just to close your eyes and meditate. Dreaming um, with God. Dreaming you're with dreaming God. Dreaming with God. Be silent before mm -hmm. Him. Quiet yourself. Um, so See that's a that's sees. a great exercise to do. Um, so yeah, great time to together, guys. We miss you. Yeah. Um, we miss your faces. Um, let's stay in community online. Um, there, God's doing miracles and he's doing wonders and he's doing, uh, he's doing um, amazing and brilliant work in and through each one of us together. So come on to our Facebook group page, um, uh, have comments. If you have questions, um, if you need breakthrough, whatever it is, just post and, and let's, you. let's be a community to help one another. And when someone does post, I want all of us to comment. It's not mm -hmm. just Bray and Jill, but you guys as a community helping each other is amazing. And, and when someone produces a book, celebrate. Yeah, them. let's because celebrate we say, them. we say that all the time. Yep. A win for one is a win for the kingdom. And a yeah. win for the kingdom is a win for all of us yeah it's so exciting yeah it's so exciting some of us are going to be the lynn vincent uh in the world that's going to be selling millions of copies and others of us are only going to be selling to friends and family and and a, and a few people outside of that and that's okay because even those friends and family were not reached by lynn you know what i mean so collectively yeah. You see what God's doing as an army of scribes, oh, yeah. as a kingdom writer oh, army. So good. Everyone has their role to play. Everyone yeah. has a part in his story. And I think of um, the, the, uh, the pastor who preached a sermon um, that he felt was not very good, but he wrote a sermon, he preached it, and uh, thought it wouldn't land, and it didn't land, and kind of felt a little bit bad. And, um, well, it changed a young man by the name of Franklin Graham mm -hmm. and uh, boom. Yeah. Boom. So think, think, 
God can do so much greater than we can imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was it Franklin or Billy? Oh, sorry, Billy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. setting me straight on I that. I meant I Billy. Billy. I meant Billy. Said Billy Graham. Franklin. <laughs> Franklin's his son, which yeah, is yes. still fruit of that. Right. Um, generational fruit. Generational oh, fruit. Um, just... So don't get us started. Yes. Now. <laughs> there you go. All right. We're creating generational fruit, guys. I love it. So. Movement. Man, that was so good what Lynn deposited in us. And Lord, we just we just <laughs> bless all of your kingdom writers that here that are here today and that are gonna hear it later, um, the recording, God, that you would give them ears to hear you and eyes to see what you're doing. We thank you for each one of our callings. God bless our hands, bring us tremendous favor <laughs> and breakthrough in Jesus' name. We love you guys. We love you guys. And we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, maybe see you Wednesday. Yes. Oh, come join us on our Kingdom Creativity International <laughs> group page where Jill and I are have a short encouraging word each Wednesday night. Uh, we're coming up to our 12th episode. Can you believe it? Backstage Pass 6.55. Backstage Pass 6.55 p.m. Pacific Time, Wednesday nights. Uh, join us on KCI, Kingdom Creativity International Same group page. Guy. And um, we'll see you there. Our, our past um, uh, episodes are on our YouTube channel, Kingdom Creativity International. So you can watch those. Um, we had a great one talking about Labyrinth, the movie 1986 last yeah. week. So you don't want to miss that one. It was super powerful. And, um, yep. and the, the, the one line, you have no power over me. And we really, we took you through a scene in the movie and it was just a lot of fun. So a lot of fun. Check it out and uh, have a great week. Put your butt in your chair. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you guys. Love you. We'll Thank see you, you soon. Love you.